Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I will show you some of my favorite custom actions that I've made. Okay, the first custom action is to clear all selections. So I have an item selected, I have a track selected, and I have a time selection here. I'm going to press escape, and that clears all three of those selections. The actual action that I'm using, unselect all tracks, items, envelope points, and time selection, remove time selection, and loop point selection. These two actions tied together with one button pretty much does everything you need. And escape will also close plugin windows if you have them floating, so that functionality isn't changed at all. So speaking of plugin windows, the second action that I want to show you will close all floating windows. You just click into the arrange view and then hit command escape and it closes all the effects windows. Let me show you that one more time by using escape. If you just click escape, it's going to unselect the track and everything, but it doesn't change what windows are floating. You'd have to go one by one, hit escape or load a screen set or something. But the custom action I set up on command escape We'll close all effects, chains, and windows. And it's really simple. SWS, SNM, close all effects, chain, windows. SWS, SNM, close all floating effects, windows. Something that I find pretty useful, and I'm using that all the time. The next action I want to show you is for automation. I do a lot of my automation for volumes, zooming, and panning of videos. And I'll make a time selection like this, and then I'll drag down the envelope. And then I'll add in a point, and then delete the middle point so it ramps between the two values. So the custom action that I set up will do that. So I make time selection, I trim it, I put the cursor where I want it, and I press Shift minus, and I press Shift plus to um, make those transition points. Here's what's inside the action here. Inserts new point at current position. It's going to move the edit cursor to the next envelope, so that's to the right, and select that one. Then it's going to delete that point. So it adds a point, moves to the next point, and deletes it. And the other action is basically the same. It just moves back one space. And it seems to work best when it's when you're adding ramps inside the time selection. But if I'm doing it before, I want to do the plus one here. And here, I want to use the minus one here. And sometimes it takes two tries, but um, it does work pretty well. And something I use a lot for video editing. This next action is really great if you use a lot of stretch markers. You just hover your mouse over where you want a stretch marker, such as this position here, and then press the letter U, and it snaps in there. So I'm going to put one there and there, and one there, one there. Add stretch marker at mouse position. Snap stretch markers to grid. Super simple, like most of these, but incredibly helpful. I've talked a lot about adding in markers at different song positions. If you are marking song parts, you do want that to be on the grid line. But adding in markers on the fly does not actually snap them to the grid lines. So my solution is a way to uh, snap those markers to the grid lines as you're adding them in. So I'll just press play and I'll add in a marker here at the chorus one. Okay, I just tapped it in. And as you can see here, it's right on that bar line. And here's the custom action that I used for that. I've it assigned to the letter T inserts marker at current position, then it moves the edit cursor to the play position, then it moves the closest project marker to edit cursor while obeying snapping. You do need SWS installed for that, but this works the same way that normal markers do when you're not in play mode. And if you have snap turned off, then it goes wherever you want. So you can kind of see it happening there I'll zoom in a little bit here. So snap is turned off. 
You can kind of see the snaps there happening. It adds in a marker. The edit cursor catches up with the playhead, and then it snaps the previous marker up to the position that the edit cursor is in. So it's a pretty accurate way of adding in markers. And I like that it has two different modes, kind of. Uh, it works differently whether the grid is on or the grid is off. There are times when you want to select an item without changing your time selection or changing your cursor position. So I've got my cursor set at bar 225. I want to grab this item and move it there. If I click here to select the item, then I've just moved my cursor. So it might be tricky to find the same position again. So I'm going to put my cursor back there clear all the selections. I've got my cursor where I want it. I want to select the item by my mouse position without actually clicking. So I'm using this action assigned to the letter I to select the item under the mouse cursor. And I can grab that one or I could grab this one. The grouped items are also selected. And then I'll just cut this and then paste and it puts it into the position. That action was select item under mouse with grouping. You can select items under the mouse. That's a, a regular included action, but it ignores the grouping for whatever reason. So a really simple solution is just to add the selected items in the group as you make the selection. The next action I want to show you is for trimming items. There's actually two different trim actions that I've set up. There are actions included with Reaper for trimming start and end of items but I don't like how they work with ripple editing. I do a ton of ripple editing. First, let me just show you what this action does. I press A to trim the start of the item up to the cursor position. So I can change my cursor position and it'll trim the start, right? And if I wanted to do the end, I have another action for that. Pretty basic. When you're in a ripple editing mode, these custom actions work really well because they also change your view and cursor position in a way that is more intuitive, in my opinion. So I've got ripple editing all tracks enabled, got this track selected. I'm going to press A. It's going to trim where the cursor was, started the item, and it's going to shove the this item back while also moving the cursor. So do that again at bar seven. It's going to snap to the beginning of the project like that. It's custom trim left. Trim items left of cursor, move cursor to the start of the item, and then go to cursor. So basically, if you're using the original trim items left of cursor with a ripple editing mode, your cursor is going to be left kind of past where you're already listening to the audio instead of going back to continue editing where you left off. So I do a lot of editing of podcasts and video like this. I need those trim actions to work right, no matter what editing mode I'm in. So these three actions in a custom action works really well for me. So I've got trim left and trim right, and they're basically the same. You just change right instead of left. And when you're trimming the end of the item, uh, you want the cursor to go to the end of the selected item. Just for quick demonstration of how this works with the uh, regular ones, here's trimming left of the cursor. You see the cursor stayed where I was before, but the item underneath moved. And now if I hit play, I'm nowhere near where I was editing before. So I want to go back to that last insert point, always. The last action I wanted to show you is for play and stop. So my default for play and stop is transport play stop. I press play, I hit, I hit stop. The cursor goes back to where it was when I started. That's how I like it. Not everyone likes it that way. There is another action, play pause, which is usually recommended when you want the cursor to stop where you uh, press the button. So I'll press play here, I hit this action. So the project just stops playing, but if you look at the top, it's actually paused. That means it's still active. And that only makes a difference because if you're sending to effects, those effects will actually be muted the buffer is still active, and if you're adding more effects, especially things that add latency, then the, the timing when you resume playback is going to be off. So it works in one way, 
but then it's broken in a couple of other ways. So there's another way that I figured out that works better for me. So I have that assigned to the letter N uh, because in Pro Tools, N was the way to toggle the two different behaviors. Playing, stopping, and it's moving the cursor position. Spacebar to play, I'll press N to stop. Transport stops. If I'm going into send effects, you're going to hear the tails and my stopping position is saved. Here's what's inside of this custom action. Move add a cursor to play cursor, transport play stop. Super simple, but again, something that's really handy, something that doesn't need a custom script to make this work. When it's only two or three actions that you're chaining together, you can get away with doing custom actions. When you're up into five, six, 10 actions, it actually takes time to step through all those actions and update Reaper as, as each action is performed. It's better to use a script in those cases, but I have other videos on scripting and a lot more information on scripting on the website. So I'm going to leave it at that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sure you guys are going to be asking for my custom actions. I want you guys to make this stuff yourself. Think about what things can be improved. Making custom actions is really simple and it's such a big time saver. And it's amazing that we can do this stuff in Reaper. If I wanted to do any of these things in other DAWs, I'd be stuck. I wouldn't be able to do those simple problem solving actions. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support me on Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.